Hello YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors! On this episode of Toys Are The Way, I will be sharing my thoughts on the latest reveals from the recent Hasbro Pulse fan stream. If you're new to the channel, or fan of Star Wars collecting, be sure to drop a like on this video, remember to subscribe, and be sure to ring that bell to stay notified. So Hasbro hosted another fan stream this Saturday, and the Star Wars team finally revealed some vintage collection figures that the community have been waiting to see. As you may know, this year marks the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, and the Star Wars team is very focused on delivering products from that amazing property. These items will be up for pre-order this Tuesday, November 1st at 1pm Eastern Time, and should be available through all major retailers. They also shared a few pipelines that we can expect to see later in the year. Taking a look at the first set of items shown, we have the reissue of the Skiff Guards and Jabba's Henchmen. These are some excellent figures to get back into the line, and they command a heavy price tag on the secondary market. Aliens like these are essential world building figures, and considered by many as the essence of Star Wars collecting. Definitely a must have for any new collector. Personally, I am very excited for these figures. I'm looking forward to having extra openers, but these are also perfect for simple customs and repaints. I do not have this particular Nikto Skiff Guard in my collection, so this is an excellent reissue for me. Kathaba is also a great figure with amazing detail, and his bandolier is a top-notch accessory for kit bashing. Wolf has to be one of my all-time favorite vintage collection figures. The level of detail, sculpting, accessories, and soft goods included with this figure is nothing short of an idiot's array during a game of Sabacc. Additionally, we have been seeing a good amount of green Nyctos in the recent Star Wars media, so I look forward to making a number of customs with this figure. Lastly, we have Yak Face, which is probably the strangest reissue since his initial debut was not that long ago. The others are older and hard to find TVC 1.0 figures with a hefty price tag. Regardless, I'm still excited to pick up a handful of these for customs as well. I've already tested out a theory, and the larger neck area will be a good fit for an Athorian Hammerhead custom similar to the one I shared in my recent custom video. So all in all, these are some great aliens to add to your collection, and with the upcoming Jabba's Throne Room playset, you may need these figures or extras to display in it. So keep that in mind, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Moving on, we finally have Paz Vizsla. This character has been high on my wish list, and it's great to finally see him in the vintage collection. He's been rumored for quite some time, but now we finally have some images of the figure, and I must say that I'm absolutely impressed. The figure comes with a fantastic amount of accessories, which includes a wrist shield, vibroblade, heavy infantry rifle with hose, jetpack, and translucent blaster, plus flame effects. Hasbro really did an incredible job with this figure. All of these accessories are removable, and the blade fits into the character's boot, as seen in multiple appearances. This is simply amazing. Combined with exceptional sculpting and paint deco, this is going to be a multiple purchase item for me. Paz Vizzle will be part of the Vintage Collection Deluxe offerings, and will be packed in the box style that we have been seeing over the past year. Hopefully the Deluxe price is closer to the more reasonable $20 eWeb Cannon. Regardless, it's going to be a high quality figure, and I'm excited for it. With that being said, it's unfortunate this figure will probably never be on a Vintage style card, and therefore not make it into my Mandalorian carded collection. Our next reveal was another very exciting release, and it was the Return of the Jedi speeder bike and scout trooper. Finally, a new small vehicle for the vintage collection. I was instantly impressed with the speeder bike. This newly sculpted vehicle looks amazing. The paint applications and weathering throughout look spot on. Additionally, the speeder has all of the articulated features we have come to expect with this vehicle, plus a little extra. Located by the handlebars is a compartment that can be lifted up, revealing a detailed engine, allowing for some creative maintenance displays. And located on the back, you will find the standard folded knapsack that is also now removable. A clear display stand has been included with the speeder once again, but this version is a big improvement in my opinion, as it can achieve various heights if rotated. This is some smart engineering and allows for a variety of flight display options. Naturally, the speeder comes in the vintage style packaging we all know and love, and it looks great. This particular release seems to be a hybrid of the small vehicle box and deluxe style offering, giving it a unique appearance that I can't decide if I'm totally on board with or not, but let me know what you think down below. While many of us in the community were hoping for a simple reissue of the Toys R Us exclusive speeder bike from a while back, I must say that I'm happy that Hasbro opted to design a newly tooled version. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about the Scout Trooper. This is an army builder that would have greatly benefited from extensive new tooling before appearing on its original 96 card back, which has been suggested to Hasbro on various occasions. Instead, Hasbro opted to provide rocker ankles and a newly sculpted head that is properly scaled with the figure. 
While these are welcome additions and do improve the articulation and aesthetic of the figure, there are still many improvements to be made. The inclusion of better hands, wrist articulation, and new style ball jointed hips really should be added to this figure moving forward. The Scout Trooper deserves to be equally as amazing as our episode 4 Stormtroopers. After all the reveals and pre-order items, Hasbro finished the fan stream with three pipeline characters for the Vintage Collection, two of which are part of the Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary and one from the Book of Boba Fett series. The first character in the lineup is Moff Der Gerard, and this will be a great addition to our Imperial forces. Along with a previous announcement of Admiral Piet, we are finally starting to see Imperial officers in the Vintage Collection. Hopefully we will see more high ranking characters such as Director Krennic and Valen Hess moving forward. Maybe Hasbro can even release a troop builder pack of generic officers as well. I think that would be really cool. Second on our lineup is Cad Bane, a very welcome addition and one of my favorite Star Wars characters. Hopefully we can see a Clone Wars version of this character later down the road, but I'm very excited to finally see Cad Bane in the vintage collection. Lastly we have Nine Numb whose name has a typo shown on screen, and he will also be part of the Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary offerings. Hasbro did mention that this figure will be a refresh. I'm not sure if that means there will be some changes to the figure, but it's more than likely he will simply be a reissued item. Regardless, I'm looking forward to this pipeline since I don't have this figure and he's rather pricey on the secondary market. So all in all, a pretty decent amount of things to look forward to in the vintage collection. Hopefully you're excited to pre-order these items this coming Tuesday, November 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern time, but feel free to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps and is always greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and may the force be with you.